Hello everyone and welcome to Software Architecture Monday. My name is Mark Richards and I'm the founder of Developer2Architect.com and also a hands-on software architect. In today's lesson number 106, we'll be taking a look at architecture stories within agile type of methodologies. Now if we take a typical agile methodology and look at the major players. We have product owners, we have software architects, we have development teams. Of course, there's a lot of other players, but for the context of this particular lesson, we'll just focus on these three folks. Product owners typically write user stories. Now, granted, a lot of environments, develop, or developers or the development team may write those user stories as well, but we'll stick to the more traditional roles. And those user stories usually follow, usually follow the traditional kind of format. Uh, as a type of user, I want to do something so that, and I give the reason. And this allows development teams to be able to write the functionality and have a context. But sometimes we get rushed or we want to kind of clean up our code. And so uh, developers also uh, tend to write stories. And we call those stories actual technical debt stories. A good example of a technical debt story, for example, would be the breaking part of a particular class. For example, here's a story. As a developer, I need to break up the ticket routing class to increase maintainability of the routing functionality. I really like this format, by the way, because what it provides is the context. Notice, as a developer. And so as a developer tells me, this is more of an internal type of activity that may relate to some functionality, but it's kind of classified as technical debt, something that's not overly critical that can be cleaned up at a later time. But let's do a scenario where we have payment processing within our application. And we can accept one of three types of payments, a credit card, maybe PayPal, or even gift cards. Uh, but we know uh, that we're significantly expanding, expanding our payment functionality to include all sorts of other payment types. And this effort <coughs> will be starting up in the near future. Now we currently have, let's say, a single payment service containing all the payment types. Well, to enhance this service, to add those additional payment types, starts to become a little cumbersome. When my testing scope is increased, I've got increased deployment risk, and uh, that service starts to get rather large, more coarse-grained. So what I'd like to do as the architect is to break up this service right now into three different services, a credit card service, a PayPal service, and a gift card service, so that I have each service matching the corresponding payment type. Uh, by doing this allows uh, for a lot better architectural extensibility because now adding a new payment method type, for example, store credit or maybe Vemno, uh, allows us to create that functionality, drop that into our ecosystem, and not impact any other payment types. So uh, this is what I'd like to do. However, how do I convey that piece of work, that refactoring, to not only the development team, but also the product owner? Well, one temptation that you might be uh, tempted to do is actually to create these architectural refactorings, any kind of refactoring that has to do with the structural aspect of the architecture or the application as a technical debt story. Uh, but there's a couple of problems with this. First, product owners usually have a negative attitude towards technical debt. It's something that can be done later on. I wish we didn't have all this debt, so on and so forth. But uh, the other point is technical debt stories are really about you know, cleaning up source code, refactoring source code. Architecture stories, however, have to do with supporting some level of business functionality, a business goal or business driver, such as scalability or fault tolerance, or maybe it's responsiveness, or in our case, in this example, elasticity. And so what I like to do in these kind of situations is to add a third category of, serve, of, of story, and this is known as an architecture story. Now, I like to follow the same kind of traditional pattern. For example, as an architect, I need to break up the payment service 
to support better extensibility when adding new payment methods. I like this format because do you remember the technical debt? As a developer, I need to do something. That tells me I'm going to be restructuring or refactoring some of my source code. But I like the start of this. As an architect, that tells me and tells everyone that this impacts the overall architecture, some structural aspect of my application. And then I can describe what I want to do, break up the payment service, and the justification and rationale why to increase extensibility, which is important for us. I like this kind of model because within any given iteration, we of course have user stories. We try as developers to try to negotiate some level of technical debt stories to be able to start paying down some of that technical debt. But the use of architecture stories not only have effectively conveys to the development team the structural aspect changes, but also allows me to negotiate now with the product owner on the importance and priority of architecture stories that impact some important architectural characteristic, some sort that comes usually from business drivers. And now with that negotiation, I can now start adding architecture stories in that iteration as well. So that within any given iteration, we really have three different kinds of stories that may be happening within that iteration. All right, so more information, of course, you can go to developer2architect.com where there's a, all sorts of good resources for you, especially Software Architecture Monday under the lessons link where these lessons are all housed. So I hope you enjoyed this short lesson number 106 on just kind of introducing this concept of architecture stories. Uh, give it a try. It's a good way of distinguishing those kind of activities that really involve the refactoring of the structural aspect of the application that really shouldn't be, at least in my opinion, considered technical debt. So stay tuned in two more Mondays for another lesson in software architecture. Uh, thank you so much. Bye-bye.